Okay, in this tutorial we're going to cover how to make um, the character transition from level 1 to level 2. Um, so it should be relatively simple. Uh, if we press play where we last left off with, we have the character who can uh, walk left and right and jump. Uh, so to get to the next level, we'll just say when you get over here, um, if you have a sprite already made, like a, let's say a flag or a cave opening or something, uh, you can use the sprite. Since I don't have a sprite for that, I'm just going to say um, create empty. So right click, create empty, or you can just click up here, create empty. And so what this will do is it create another empty image. It doesn't need to have a sprite, but if you want to use a sprite, just drag one in there. Let's go to add component on that, and we'll put a physics 2D. And I'm going to use a box collider. You could just circle, edge, whatever you want. Uh, and it puts a collision box here. And so this will be the uh, end goal. When the character touches this, it'll start to the next level. Uh, so again, you may want to have a sprite image on there, but for this demo, I'm just going to use a blank image. So when I click off it, you can see that there's no representable goal, so it might be nice to have one. All right, um, so we're going to add another component, and we're going to put Playmaker on there, Playmaker FSM. Uh, and what we're going to do is say when the player contacts this collision box, jump to the next level. All right, so let's go to Edit. It's already down here. So on State 1, let's put um, a collision. So We'll do collision 2D event. Uh, you can also use trigger if you wanted to, uh, which is uh, collision or trigger 2D event, but I'm going to use the collision 2D event so it stops the player when he hits it. Um, so on collision enter, uh, collider tag, we need a tag for the player. So if I click on the player, he's untagged at the moment, so I'm going to click on this and there's already existing one that comes with Unity called player. So click on that one. So now he is called player as a tag. So when I go back to this game object, which I might as well rename this game object to um, call it level end. So when you reach the end of the level, uh, so go back to here. So this is asking for the collider tag. So I'm going to click these double lines, which will let me then use um, existing tags rather than variable names. So I'm going to click on player. So when the player that we tagged as the player collides with the collision, which is this box, then send event, we need to right click on here, add transition and pick a transition. I'm going to use finished as default. Um, now that I've set a collision there with the right click, I can go to send event and finish is right there. So when the collision of the player hits this, it'll go to the next state. So right click and add new state drag a line from finished to state number two. And on state number two, uh, let's type in level. So we're going to go load level. There's a couple other ones, restart, load level number. I'm going to go with regular load level. And here we need to type in the name of the level. I don't currently have another scene that has um, load level, I mean another level, level two. So let's just call it level two and then I'll make a level two. Cool. So when the player collides with that, he'll jump to level two. Right now, this won't work until I have another one. So let's click on something here, create a new scene. And you have to spell it the exact same way you just typed it in for the code. So level two, I didn't use any capitals or spaces. So uh, however you type it in here has to match what you typed in here. Um, but it could be whatever you want to name it. You could have all the spaces and everything. All right, so level two. Um, click on level two now. Let's press save to make sure we save the previous level. All right, so I don't have anything in here, so let me drag a ground uh, state in here. And I'll put that there. And I'll put another ground in here as well, so it looks a little bit longer. All right, we're also going to need the character, so let me go. I don't have a character saved yet, so let me jump back to falling with the last one I was in. So let's save the new scene. Uh, so the character, we need a copy of him. So if I click on this character, uh, you can see he's right here and he has all of his code so far. If I drag the character from the hierarchy tab into the project tab, um, let's drop him, I guess somewhere at the bottom. What it'll do is it'll create a prefab. This prefab means I can use this character from the project with all of existing code in all the different levels because he's a recurring object now, just like the ground is a prefab. Um, 
He also, also note the character's name changes from black color to blue, which indicates he's a prefab. It also says right up here that the character is now a prefab, whereas like the main camera doesn't have the prefab tag. So because it's a prefab, uh, there's some pros and cons. If I click on the character here, I can change things and it'll change every character in the entire scene and the entire game, which is great. It updates everything. But if I try and change this guy, the one in the scene, which is not the same as the one in the project, it should give us a warning if we try and do anything. So editing a prefab instance is disabled. So it's warning you, you can bypass it, but it's warning you if you change anything here, it won't affect every character in the game. So we have to, if you add new code on here, you'd have to go back and add new code on everyone in every scene. But if you click on this guy and try and make changes, it won't give you the warning because you're changing universally every character. All right, so with that established, now that we have a copy of this character, I can jump back to level two, and I can take this copy and drop him right here, in which case all of his code for everything else we've done so far will have been copied over. So that's the benefit of using a prefab. It's a prefabricated piece. All right, so everything should be set now. Let's move him, I guess, a little over here. Um, and let's see what we get now. So let's jump back to this one. Save the previous scene. All right, and let's press play. So the character starts over here, he walks, and when he reaches that invisible ending, uh, we have an issue here. Uh, looks like, oh yeah, we need to add the scene to the build. The build is like when you're exporting, you need to have every level in the build. Uh, so it knows that each level gets exported and right now it's not so it it doesn't it can't find it It's not looking through the list. It's looking through the build settings. So let's go over to file build settings Just like we're going to export in every level that we have since this is one level that I'm using and this is another level that I'm using Every level has to be in here. The first one at the top is the first level that will load So be careful which sequential order you're in um, So This is level two and if you have more levels, level three, level four, you keep adding all of these to the build settings. You don't have to press build at the moment, that's for turning them in, um, or turning in your assignments. Uh, so as long as it's added here, it should work. So let's close that out. So now I shouldn't have that warning that there's not a level in the build. So when I walk over here, it should jump right into level two. Um, it's not coded to jump back to level one. Uh, we can code it to go back to level one, um, but at the moment, this is just the simple method of jumping to level two. And the camera is not set up and any of the stuff, that there's no detailed level two, I haven't built it yet, but you can then at this point build and you can easily jump from level one to level two by uh, contacting this one. All right, and if you wanted to reuse this to go to level three and four and so on, you would just copy this object with the code and just change this to a different um, scene name, such as level three or level four, and you would just jump to different scenes.